Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year from KISS. Feliz Navidad, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas from KISS. <laughs> ho, ho, ho! I'm wishing everybody a really Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Someone stole Santa? That does not rock! What's going on, Vinyl Community? Welcome to another episode of 25 Days of Kissmas, where every day leading up to Kissmas, I will be reviewing and discussing every Kiss Studio album plus more. For the 17th episode, I will be reviewing the Asylum album from 1985. Just before the tour for Animalize was due to start, guitarist Mark St. John came down with writer syndrome in his hands and was unable to perform with the band. The band brought on Bruce Kulick as a backup guitarist in case Mark was well enough to perform. After Mark playing two full shows and a partial show with the band, Bruce would ultimately become his permanent replacement. Thus, we have the classic 80s lineup of Gene, Paul, Eric, and Bruce. Album. Side 1, Track 1, King of the Mountain. The origins of this song date back to the Animalized tour, with Paul and Bruce working out ideas during downtime, and then Desmond Child made some contributions. Eric Carr opens the track with some fast drum fills that almost echo the bombast of the drum sound that can be found on Creatures, and lyrically, it's about the typical sentiment that runs in Kiss songs, that people are allowed to feel like they're number one, or in this case, King of the Mountain. This song at one point was a concert opener on the Asylum Tour and appeared a few times in the set list early on before being dropped entirely. Track 2, Any Way You Slice It. This track was written by Gene and collaborator Howard Rice around the time of Lick It Up and originally was written for the band Heavy Petten. The song received a live airing for a grand total of one time on the opening night of the Asylum Tour. Track 3, Who Wants to Be Lonely. This is a collaborative power ballad between Paul, Desmond Child, and Jean Bouvier. While the song was never released as a single, it did get released as the third music video from the album, which was heavily edited down because of its risque nature, which by today's standards is rather tame. Track 4, Trial by Fire. This is a collab between Gene and Bruce, a simple song about believing in yourself, which does have some ear-catching hooks between the verses and choruses. Track 5, I'm Alive. This is a rather rip-roaring fast number, which, just like King of the Mountain, stems from Paul and Bruce working out ideas during the Animalized tour, with some later contributions from Desmond Child. Now we're going to flip the album over to side 2, track 6, Love's a Deadly Weapon. The seeds of this song stem from a demo called Deadly Weapons, written by Gene and Paul before work on The Elder started in early 1981. Flash forward to 1984, Gene was producing Plasmatic's vocalist's Wendy O. Williams' debut solo album, W.O.W., and while he took part in the pre-production demos for the follow-up Commander of Chaos, he would have to decline producing it due to other obligations. One of the songs on the album was Party, which was written by Wes Beach and Ron Swenson, both of whom were the respective guitarist and manager of Plasmatics. Gene liked the song enough to borrow the riff of the song, which earns Beach and Swenson a co-writing credit on this track, and as for the original Deadly Weapons demo, only the chorus and its first two lines were retained. Track 7, Tears Are Falling. Here we have a ballad from Paul that tells about the end of a relationship and how when one cries, it says a lot more than what words could. It's worth mentioning that Paul also played bass on the song, and despite the numerous videos done in support of the Asylum album, this was the only song to be released as a single within the US, and the flashy music video was shot in England and directed by music video giant David Mallet. While the single didn't chart well in Billboard, it reached number 20 in the mainstream rock tracks, and is considered to be one of the key tracks of the non-makeup period, having been performed by the band after the makeup was put back on. Track 8, Secretly Cruel, a song by Gene that was partly inspired by a liaison with a groupie that upon meeting for God knows what reason at her house, he noticed photos and posters of himself all over her wall, so it was obvious the woman in question wanted more out of the situation. Track 9, Radar for Love. In a move similar to what Paul and Sean Delaney did with Led Zeppelin's Whole Lot of Love on Makin' Love from the Rock and Roll Over album, this song can be seen as Paul and Desmond Child's attempt to pay homage to Led Zeppelin's Black Dog. 
Paul would go on to prove how Zeppelin would provide their tip of the hat to their bluesy influences, such as Willie Dixon, and here he was doing the same thing to Zeppelin. Track 10, Ah All Night. This is a collaborative effort between Paul, Desmond Child, and Jean Bouvier, which Paul describes as being the son of Heavens on Fire meets Tomorrow and Tonight. The chorus comes across as rather anthemic with its singing slash chanting feel to it, and the song was only released as a promo 12-inch single in the U.S. and as a second single from Asylum in most international markets. The music video for the song was also made around the same time as the Who Wants to Be Lonely video. As for where this album stands in my KISS catalog ranking, I would put Asylum at the number 14 spot. This album very much continues the band's foray in the glam metal genre, which was the obvious trend of the day the band was following at the time. And speaking of glam, this was probably the most head-scratching period when you look at their bright fluorescent neon outfits. You definitely need some shades when you look at them. But as with most 80s albums, the Paul songs, and in this case the singles released from the album, are strong and Gene was still kind of in Hollywood mode phoning in songs but needless to say it's a decent yet general glam metal album. So there you guys go that is the 17th episode of the 25 days of Kissmas series. Stay tuned tomorrow for the 18th episode and you can already guess what comes next. If you enjoyed this video please go ahead give it a like and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video and most importantly keep the record spinning. And children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow.